and was buried by the wayside, which is also Bethlehem. In the Old Testament. Was it, was it Rachel? Rachel. It's a place where the matriarch Rachel died and was buried by the wayside. Genesis chapter 48, verse 7. Rachel's tomb was at Bethlehem. The traditional gravesite stands at the entrance of Bethlehem. Um, what else happened in Bethlehem? Um, in the Old Testament, another woman that became a part of the lineage of Jesus. Yes, Ruth. Ruth, yes. The valley to the east is where Ruth of Moab gleaned the fields and returned to town with Naomi. <clears throat> um, let's see, who else lived in Bethlehem from the lineage of Jesus? Great, 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 great grandfather. David. David. Yeah. It was the, Bethlehem was the home of Jesse, the father of King David of Israel, and the site of David's anointing by the prophet Samuel. It was from the well of Bethlehem that three of David's warriors brought him water when he was hiding in the cave. And Bethlehem is the place where sheep were raised for the sacrifices in nearby Jerusalem at the temple. So Bethlehem. Though it was little <clears throat> among the thousands, it held mighty significance yes. for a number of different reasons. Psalm chapter 132, verse 5, it says, Until I find out a place for the Lord and habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Lo, when we heard of it at Ephrata, we found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Bethlehem goes to show that though you may not have much, you may not know much, you may not be who you think you ought to be in order to use of God, God can still use you. God didn't send him, Jesus, to be born in Jerusalem. He didn't send him to be born in the major city. He sent him to be born in Bethlehem, mm -hmm. though thou be little. So, the wise men came, and in verse Matthew chapter Two, verse 2 it says saying where is he that is born king of the Jews yes. for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him yes. who are these men and where did they come from so how many wise men were there we don't really know it doesn't say it doesn't say it does not say how many wise men now there was three gifts gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and so right. we just assume the fact that there was three wise men, but we don't know that. So what do other translations call these dudes? Magi, mm -hmm. wise men, astrologers, wizards, scholars, basically educated people. Smart people. <laughs> yeah. Powerful people. People that had an understanding of the stars in the sky. I mean, the reason that they came to Bethlehem was they were following what? A star. A star. Yeah. So obviously they studied the night sky, they noticed something different, and they recognized it as a sign of where something was. And so they began to follow that star. There's a Christmas carol, We Three Kings of Orient are, right? Um, I know another version that I probably should not sing, but um, we three kings of oil and tar. But um, <laughs> um, so we, so, um, but we don't sing that one on a regular basis, that's for sure. Um, and so, but these were kings. These were people that did not just ride around in um, a donkey on a donkey and you know just travel the countryside by themselves. My guess is, imagine with me, okay? So say there's three kings, we'll just say that, and every king had 50 servants, mm. at least. Yeah. Then they have, would have a caravan riding with them, transporting them, taking them, keeping them safe. My guess is this was no small parade when they rolled up into Jerusalem, right? This was no small, um, it reminds me of um, um, Aladdin when he rolls up into um, with all of his parade after the genie granted his wishes, and, um, he became a prince, right? He, these wise men were men of wealth, of stature, and they were powerful people. And so when they came into the city, 
their presence was made known. Yeah. It was no, so it wasn't like they went to the tourism office and said, where is Jesus? Who did they go to? They went to the king. Yep. You have to be somebody to be able to just walk into the king's palace and have a, a, commun a, a talk with him, right? Yeah. You couldn't just show up and say, hey, I want to talk to the king because you'd probably either A, be denied or B, be killed because you decided to seek presence with the king and you weren't allowed to do that. Right. So, this these were men of stature, of great knowledge, wealth, all the things. We don't know if there were three or how many there was. We know that there was wise men. So there was, we know there was multiple because it doesn't say wise man. It says men. So we know that there was multiple. We just don't know how many. And you know, so if these guys were so great and powerful, do you think that all they brought was these little trinkets of gifts? No. 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 Like gold, frankincense, and where they brought? I bet you they brought loads full of right. these things. Like yeah. that was probably also in their caravan. We show this cute picture of three wise men kneeling down with their gold, <laughs> frankincense, and myrrh, mm -hmm. and it makes for a great nativity. We don't have room in our front yards for everybody that was probably there, mm -hmm. but in all reality, they probably poured blessings upon this baby because they recognized this baby to be something great. Bucket. Buckets full. It is generally accepted that the Magi were a priestly caste from Persia, once a mighty country where modern Iran and Iraq are now located. In the second century, a church father named Tertullian suggested that these men were kings because the Old Testament had predicted that kings would come to worship the Christ. Tertullian also concluded that there were three kings based on the number of gifts mentioned, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So it's basically someone's assumption that there was three kings because there was three gifts, right? right. So in the 6th century, someone decided to name these guys. Mm -hmm. Melchior, Baltazar, and Gaspar was in the 6th century someone decided that these were possibly their names. And then the term magi is the base from which our modern words magician and magistrate are derived. So we have a little bit of knowledge of them, right? We have, we know that they're powerful, we know where they came from roughly, we have a suggestion of who their names were, what their names were, we have a suggestion that there was three of them. And so, but we do know this. Do you know, was, did the wise men come to the manger or were they someplace else? They were someplace else. Because yes. it took them a long time to get there. Took them a long time to get there. And number one, so Jesus was born in a manger, like in a barn. He didn't live there. That wasn't Mary and Joseph's house, right? <laughs> like, they didn't take up residence there. Why were they in the manger? Because there was no room for them in the end. Literally, the only reason they were in there is because she needed a place to give birth. Yeah. Right. That was the only reason they were there. That's right. It had nothing to do with the fact that, I mean, it wasn't like they got kicked out of their house and they were living in a barn. Like, no. that wasn't no. That wasn't the storyline. The story was they gave birth in a barn because there was no room for them in the end. At some point, they went home. Right. At some point... They determined that, okay, living in the barn is enough. I can only keep the barn so clean, right? And they went home. So they did not come at the manger. They came much later. They came from modern-day Iraq and Iran, Persian and Babylon, who were what? Traditional enemies of Israel. Yes. So it's also interesting... Uh, where would they have gotten their information to even know what this star was all about or how it was associated with, uh, with Israel? Mm -hmm. And so when you think of Iraq and Iran, that is Assyria and Persia. Assyria is the empire that carried away all of the 10 northern tribes captive. Mm -hmm. Then Persia conquers uh, Assyria, which means Iran conquered Iraq at that time, northern Iraq. 
So all of those people that were carried away into captivity would have still been there. They didn't come home. The ones that came home under Nehemiah were, uh, were uh, from uh, the southern part. And so uh, they would have brought Daniel and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and the writings of the prophets, and they would have had access to those writings, those prophecies. So they were actually probably studying Old Testament prophets and making that association. And they might have even been some of the descendants of the, the Israelites that were carried away into captivity. They might have even actually been the, uh, the wise men. We don't know for sure. But there's just kind of an Old Testament connection there that could be important. But obviously they were historians. Mm -hmm. Like they're more than astrologers, they were also historians. Mm -hmm. They wanted, they knew about the prophecy enough yeah. to kind of know the right questions to ask. They didn't know obviously fully what everything was, but they had a general idea. Um, they were also astrologers. Yes, they were. Yes, exactly. So they traveled the distance of Iowa to New York. Wow. Now they didn't get there by plane. No. It took them a long time to get there. Yeah. Many, many months it took to get there. How many miles is it from Iowa to New York? What part of Iowa are we talking about? <laughs> Let's just say Des Moines to New York. Des Moines, Iowa to... Maybe 12 New York. map rolls. It's 1,150 miles. Wow. So by, by car <laughs> at 80 miles an hour. <laughs> okay, so some of you 90 miles an hour. Um, 17 hours and 19 minutes. How fast do you think a caravan travels? Like, Seven miles an hour. Four miles maybe. an hour. Yeah. Just tell me walking directions are not available. Actually, Mike says walking days. It, it would take you 17 days. 17 and three hours. That's walking really fast. But that's it like not stopping. It would. Like <laughs> I don't think I think it would take me 17 days to get from here to Davenport. But yeah, five days and five hours. Well, the uh, average, the average human walks a little over two miles an hour. So you have a caravan, You're not going because to again, we are not. And have you ever seen a camel run? They're riding camels, like, <laughs> no, they don't really ride. Like, like, you ain't gonna get anywhere very fast if you're not riding camels that's running, okay? Like, it's, they run so weird. But I mean, they're not going very fast, so it took them months to get there. Now, do you think that Literally, so again, a lot of teaching the Christmas characters is using our imagination because some of the stuff we know and some of it we don't know, right? That's right. So, but if you think about it, the star, the star must have been shining for a little bit, right? Because I don't think they woke up one morning and said, oh, that's a bright star, let's follow it. <laughs> like, that's not what they did. No. They studied the star. They searched it out. They looked, okay, what region may that be over? What area of the country is that coming from? Right. Is there anything in old in old writings that we should look up, that we should discover, that we should read about? Um, they begin to gather their crew together, right? Again, they begin to gather their, their livestock that they would take with them. They begin to gather their their um, gifts that they would take with them, their people, their servants that they would take with them, and so the star had to have been shining for some time. In fact, the star may have begun when Jesus was born and they began their journey at that time. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, and began their journey, meaning the star began to shine, they began to research all that. So it could be a year, year and a half before they even get to where this baby was. Mm. So, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 4. Let's see. So verse 3 says, when Herod the king heard these things, because Matthew, well, let me just start Matthew 2 and 
Sorry about verse 1 again. And when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled. Why was he troubled? Because he was the king. Yeah, that's right. He didn't want no one to come in and dethrone him and take him off of his powerful place. Yeah. Um, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he gathered all the chief priests and scribes and people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Yeah. Now, isn't that interesting? He demanded of them where Christ should be born. The wise men did not ask that question. No. Nope. They did not ask where was the Christ born. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. right. They said, where was born the king yep. of the Jews? So Herod knew. He had an understanding of he may be the king, but he was not the king of the mm -hmm. Jews. Yeah, right? right? He knew the prophecies. He knew what was going to come to pass. He knew that in Bethlehem there was going to be something born. He knew the history. He knew where to turn when it came to things of God. It says he turned to the chief priests and the scribes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He gathered them together and demanded where Christ should be born. He did this because he knew where to turn when it came to things of God, but he did it with the wrong motive. Yeah, right? right? So often, how often is that done in our world today? They turn to the things yeah, of God right. but for the wrong. Judge not lest you be judged. Right? Yeah. They use scripture. They take it out of context yeah, right. and they use it to benefit themselves yep. and it's all done with the wrong motive. With greed in mind. And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, yeah. and thou Bethlehem and the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that will rule my people Israel. Yes. Every detail of Jesus' birth had been prophesied. Every single every single detail had been prophesied. Right. That's true. They should have been expecting his arrival. Yes. Some of them were. Some of them were waiting. The shepherds in the field, they had an idea. They weren't too terribly surprised. I mean, they might have had a stroke when the angel showed up. <laughs> but they weren't too surprised that Jesus was born. They've been looking for the Messiah. That's right. They've been looking for their Redeemer. That's right. Uh, Simeon and Anna in the temple, they've been looking for the Messiah. They, yes. had, they knew the prophecy. So there were some people that knew about his arrival, but there was others that just weren't expecting, just weren't believing. Mm -hmm. How much are we living in that day today? Mm -hmm. We know the prophecies wow. of Jesus' arrival. We know he's coming back, and yet people today are not living with the right. expectation of That's his right. arrival. There was no excuse in that day for the people to no, not know that Jesus was born. There was no excuse for it. Everything had been written. Everything had been laid out. There was no excuse today when Jesus returns that people should miss the rapture because right. we have it all laid out for us. That's right. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently mm -hmm. what time the star appeared. So the assumption was that the star appeared at the time that Jesus was born. <laughs> the wise men must have been shocked at the apathy and the ignorance they found when they arrived in Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. No one even knew that the most important event in history had taken place only a few miles away. Wow. That's good. Wow. And you know what's interesting? Mm -hmm. What did the Bible say that the shepherds did when they left? They, they went and told they people. Yeah. They didn't keep it to themselves. That's true. They went and told people what was happening. So somebody knew. Yeah. Somebody knew what would happen. Mm -hmm. Somebody knew that the angels came to the shepherds. I mean, they may not have had social media, but they had a way of getting news around that this amazing thing happened, right? Yes. So these people knew, and yet they could care less. Mm. They ignored it. They didn't appreciate it. They didn't uh, value it. No one even cared. And then he says this, these words, 
And Herod said, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Wow. There's a key word in there, right? There are key words in that verse there. What's that? Young child. Mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't oh. a baby. He was, was looking baby, for a young child. Why do you think yeah. he asked when did the star appear? Mm -hmm. To know how old he was. The answer was oh, later when Herod went to have all the male children killed. Yeah. Two and under. Two and under. Yeah. So Jesus could have been two years old at this point. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Because my guess is his two and under statement came from the fact that the wise men said about two years ago the star appeared. Yeah, that's right. Why else would he say two and under? Why wouldn't he say a year and under? Why wouldn't he say right. six months? Why wouldn't yeah. he say yeah. infant men? Yeah, that's right. Male child. No. We know because common sense tells us to put things together. Yep. That's right. The <laughs> infant was about two years old when the wise men came to visit. It wasn't Mary holding a baby in her lap. It wasn't, it wasn't, and maybe she was holding it, but you know, it wasn't a newborn. It wasn't like the shepherd showed up and then yeah. the same night the wise men showed up. It was a year, possibly a year to a year and a half. And so when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the Young, young child, child yeah. was. Not where the baby was, but where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Yes. They found what their heart had desired for yeah. so long. For I mean, imagine days, months, possibly even a year on the path to this place. They didn't right. know where they were going. No. They didn't know what they would no. find. They truly they didn't know they were going to a castle. They didn't know they were going to a home. They didn't know who was going to be there. They didn't know anything but that they were following the star to the king of the Jews. And they wanted to do what? They didn't want to go and attack him. They didn't want to go and kill him. No. They didn't want to go and, and say, oh, well, this is a threat to our democracy, no. to our kingdom. This is this is not what they went to do. What did they do when they got to the house? They fell down and worshipped him. And when they were coming to the house, they saw this young child yes. with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Yes. And when they opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Yes. They bowed down on their knees yes. before this young child and oh, began yeah. to worship the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. The yes. God of all creation yes. robed in flesh as yes. a young child with That's his right. mother Mary there with them. And they began to worship. You see, they had an understanding of who this baby was. They had That's an right. understanding of what had been prophesied and what had been promised. <clears throat> they had an understanding and so they worshipped him. Imagine that. These men traveled for years, or a year at least probably, to worship the king. The neighbors next door probably never even paid a visit. Wow. The neighbors next mm, door that's good. Come on. didn't even Come bake on. a cake, a, a pan of brownies for Mary. Yeah. Wow. Like, the people next door didn't even care. I think that could be a warning to the church, Jesus. too. Yes. The people with God's presence right here in our very midst, we can become so comfortable with it. So, uh, you know, like, it's just, it just becomes normal for us. And yet when someone comes from a long way off, not maybe in miles, but physically in their yeah. spiritual walk with God, maybe they come in off the streets or they are dealing with, with <clears throat> um, abuse or they're dealing with addiction and all kinds of things and they travel so long searching for oh, something that they fall down on their face and begin yes. to Jesus. worship this king oh, that on. they find and yet yes. we sit here every Sunday and every oh, Wednesday and we don't even value that he right. is in oh, our midst we give him a portion of what we have 
these gifts of these wise men brought were of great, Jesus. great value. Yeah, Gold, Amen. frankincense, and mirth. Yeah. Powerful gifts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Gifts. A wise lover values not so much the gift of the lover as the love of the giver. Yes. So that he brought, these wise men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Right? Yeah. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so, what do these represent? Gold represents his deity, yes. his kingship, and his purity. They knew who he was. Yeah. They knew he was powerful. They knew he was a pure heart. They yeah. knew that there was something about this child that, now, what would it be like to be a parent and birth a child that did not sin? Wow. It's <laughs> an amazing job as a parent, right? Amazing. So like, like, huh, a miracle. What is this like? But you think about it. You think of him as a toddler, okay? You think of him as a baby. So, he was a baby. He had to learn to walk. Yep. He had to. He had to learn to eat properly. He had to learn to run. He had to learn to do all these things. But the Bible says he was yet without sin. Yeah. So where do children usually sin, right? And the disobedience, yeah. the rebellion, yeah. that kind of stuff. So yeah. like literally, Mary said, "Go clean up your room." He did it. He was a perfect child. Yeah. Like there was no. There was no like. His, his, sibling, his siblings did not like him because he was the favorite child. But gold represented he was God and his kingship. He was the king over all the earth, yeah, right? That's right. Amen. He, this baby, yeah. this young child, right. two years old, was king of the world. Yeah. And little did he know that the, the weight of the world would be placed on his shoulders yeah. when he went to the cross for our sins. Frankincense was an ingredient used by the priests in temple worship to blend with the smell <clears throat> of sacrifices. Yes. Our worship is a sweet smelling fragrance before the King of Kings. Yes. That's why we worship him. That's why we live our, not just worship him with our words, but worship him with our life, worship him with our actions, worship him with what everything that has within us. Like <clears throat> these people. They may have been wealthy, but these gifts were not cheap gifts. That's these right. gifts were of great value, and so they brought frankincense as a symbol of their worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Myrrh, what does myrrh represent? Myrrh represents a spice for embalming. Now, we don't use that nowadays, just so you know, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> I knew where it was and I have never seen myrrh used, but um, no, myrrh no, represents no, a spice no. for Embalming. Mm. It is used to prepare the dead. Mm. What was Jesus' sole purpose? It wasn't here to overthrow any kings. No. He wasn't here to to prove himself. He wasn't here to, you know, make a name for himself. No. He was here for the sole purpose to take on the sins yes. of the world oh, come on. upon his shoulder. Right. And Jesus was born to die. Mm. That was his sole purpose. True. Because God said, I need something that can have perfect blood, that can wash away the sin of every man. Mm -hmm. And so I need to create, to robe myself, because only God is perfect. Only God is perfect. Mm -hmm. So God said, I need to put myself into flesh so that I can be born, so I can live. The Bible says, he was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So he went through temptations. He went through things as a yes. young man. He went through things as, <clears throat> as a young adult. He went through temptations. He went through struggles. He, yet he was without sin to prepare him to die from the moment of his birth. Mm -hmm. So gold is deity. Frankincense, the worship. Myrrh represents his death. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> The scripture says in verse in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 12, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Yes. So they didn't go back to Herod. No. They didn't go and say, hey, guess what we found? We found Jesus, and this is where he's at. No. They didn't do that, because if that was the case, 
then Herod would have only sought for him. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, you know, Herod would have known the name, the address, and the phone number of right. how to get to where Jesus was. Right. He would not have had to say to his army, go and kill all the young male ch children under the age of two, two and under. He would not have had to say that. They did not go back the same way that they came. They did not go to uh, they did not go back to Herod. They did not go back to the, the although Herod had said it. So, let's see. So, here, Matthew chapter 2, verse 16 says, when, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise and was exceeding wroth, he was yep. mad, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. And in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time, when he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Mm -hmm. yes. Two years old. Imagine, because Jesus was born, that your two-year-old son, and I mean, this is no fault of Jesus, so it's not because of Jesus being born, it's because of the jealousy of Herod and the mm -hmm. unwillingness That's to true. acknowledge that Jesus was the king of the Jews. Right. Right. His unwillingness to acknowledge that scripture had been fulfilled. And so because of it, it says, Then was it fulfilled which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation, and weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. Uh, so, the wise men, they, were the, they left a different way. They had an encounter with Jesus. They had an encounter with the King of Kings. Well, he's, he's just a baby. No, this is more than a baby. That's right. He's I can only imagine. Now, I don't think, like, Jesus as a two-year-old, like, blessed them and gave some great prophetic word to them. No. He was still a two-year-old. Right. But I do think <clears throat> that when these wise men walked into his presence, they were changed. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. Because there isn't a single person that can walk into the presence of God and not be changed. Yes, that's right. Not amen. a single person. You say, well, I see people all the time. They walk out and they go back to living the exact same way. That doesn't mean they weren't changed. Right. Come on. That doesn't right. mean they weren't touched. Yeah, that's right. That doesn't amen. mean that <clears throat> their life was not forever altered, right? Mm, that's right. Because the power of being in the presence of an almighty king, an almighty God, even as a child, Cause the wise men to leave differently than what they came. Yep. Right. Yeah. So these men that came from Persia, Iran, wherever they came from, to go to visit this baby because of a star that they saw, went home, changed people. And do you think that that story ended there for these men? Mm -hmm. no. They went home and just said, oh, it was a great trip. No. Great gas mileage. Everything was smooth sailing. <laughs> like, no. no. They went home and they told their family right. about this baby, yes. this king of the Jews that was born mm -hmm. and caused them to leave a different way. Yes. May we all be like the wise men. Amen. Number one, to seek out Jesus. Mm -hmm. To seek out his presence. Oh, to seek on. to be in his presence. Let us be like the wise men when we bring our all to him. Mm. Let's bring gifts to him, not just yes. of oh, half our yes. heart, but bring all of our heart. Yes. They came with possessions. They came with valuables. They came with great wealth, and they left it there for Jesus. Mm. Let us be like the wise men where we leave our all for this king. And then let us be like the wise men where we enter into his presence and we leave changed. Yes. Let's allow him to change the way we talk. Let's allow him to change the things that we do. Let's allow him to change our conversation and change how we interact with people because Jesus, this child, became Jesus who died on the cross. He didn't stay on the cross. No. He died, and three days later, he rose again. Yes. And soon and very soon, we are going to see our king. He's yes. going to come in clouds of glory. The trumpet's going to sound. Yes. He's going to take us out of here. The rapture is going to take place. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be like the people right. in the city of Jerusalem. No. 
that did not even acknowledge that Jesus was their next door neighbor. And yet someone came from miles and miles away to worship him. Let us be the ones to worship him. So, lessons today from the wise men. We'll see what next week brings. I'm not sure what character we talked about next week. Joseph, we don't know much about Joseph. Um, there's not a lot to know about him, but we can speculate a lot of things about Joseph. Mm -hmm. Probably take some life lessons from him for sure. Right. Um, Mary, we know some details about Mary, but not a lot. But we can learn some life lessons from Mary as well. And so we're just going to go through these characters. Um, we talked about characters of Christmas, and someone said, so do you mean the Grinch and Santa Claus? Well, no, it's not what we meant. No. Not those kind of characters. No. Uh, but characters of the true Christmas story. So I yeah. um, invite you to come back next week. I don't know if I'll be the one teaching, but um, there will be someone teaching that will be just as good or probably better than me, and they will do a great job. And um, we're going to learn about these characters because we only have seven weeks, seven weeks left. Um, until we start our Christmas festivities. Um, seven weeks until Christmas Eve, I think. So, and we um, won't have class on Christmas Eve day. Do what? Where on the morning of Christmas Eve, we will have a Christmas breakfast. Yes. And the then just Eve, a worship we'll service. Worship, have okay. one worship service Christmas Eve, and we'll have classes, we'll have breakfast Six together, lessons. and then uh, we will worship together, and then... Um, People can go and celebrate with their families Christmas Day. Um, and so it's hard to believe it's that time of year. I am grateful that it is currently 52 degrees out with a high of 64 today. And it is yes. not snowing, so I will that as a win yes. right now. <laughs> Amen. When you all, all are dismissed, um, 10, it's 1050, gives us time to go to the restroom. Pray before service, and we invite you to join us upstairs for worship service. Amen. Yeah, oh, Lord, Sylvia, I'm sure you do. <laughs> 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 okay. How much does the paper